it's a good question because you don't always want to have your headset on. You don't always want to be, that shuts down your environment and shuts down your senses. When in residential, we mostly want to. Welcome to Finding Your Spark again. I am really excited about today's interview. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to make a house feel like a joy-filled home. This is a really big deal. So today I have with me Joanne Riley, who is an ASID designer. She's been the senior designer and owner of the Interior Edge for the past 17 years. This multi-talented interior design firm has expertise in custom residential and specialty commercial design from conception to completion with offices in Hartford, Manhattan, and the Berkshires. Ms. Riley's work is distinguished by an innate ability to understand, respect, and embrace her clients' needs, values, and dreams. And that is why she's on this podcast today, because she really understands the energetic connection between things and people and vibration. And she happens to be my sister. Welcome, Joanne. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here. I have been wanting to expand our conversation about how we we get that spark, how we make it happen in ourselves and bring it into the world around us. And having you here really brings it into the world around us. So why don't you, you tell me a little bit about that, about how do people reach, how do your clients reach for joy in their design? Well, let's start with the easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. What is interior design? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that they really come to a designer thinking of uh, actual joy. I mean, I think that's like the highest attainment. Um, but it, I certainly am, am thinking of it for them. It's uh, there's uh, they they usually come with. Problems, or maybe I'm doing, right now I'm doing a big new house for someone. It's their legacy house, the last house they'll do. And um, we're really creating special moments. So everybody has a, maybe a pain point. It could be safety. You know, for myself, I love to create a small environment. Could be within a bigger environment. But it creates a space that's very safe and loving. And that's an important value for me that I might not feel when I'm out in the world. So when I get home, I want to make sure I have that feeling. I have other clients, um, one of them who's a baker, and she just loves to have that feeling of a little bit of chaos and, and a little bit of fun, but very, um, really great lighting. And, and that brings her pure joy when she can set things up so she can she in her case she actually makes something other people were setting up rooms that are meditation rooms or yoga rooms or quiet rooms or um, music rooms i mean to play or to listen or both meditation rooms and within the same house you can have many of these same things although we worked a lot in new york city so sometimes we have to incorporate the different elements into one room and you could have little spaces for that so is, is does that answer the question <laughs> oh totally i love that so there's so many ways we can go here i've got three more questions for you just off of that just that one little question um so the first thing i want to say is i uh really love that what you're talking about is dealing with some core emotional kind of set points that people have and in our lives, we, we go through things, right? We have little traumas. Sometimes we have big traumas. And they leave their mark on us. It's part of the, the wonder of going from being a baby with no experience in the world to being older with lots of experience in the world is that we have all these things that we carry with us. And sometimes they serve us and sometimes they don't. When you talked about, well, I'm setting up my world to be safety or I'm setting up my world to be uh, that feeling of of uh, nurturing, right? That's what the kitchen reminds me of is like, Definitely. how do I feel that I can be in conjunction with the world and my family and I'm nurturing. And fun. And that, that's a, a lot role of fun in the me. kitchen. <laughs> yeah. 
And so all of these, these spaces are literally places that we can, we can bring out into a spatial relationship, our relationship with our emotions and the emotions we want to have and the emotions we know we have that don't serve us, which is still okay, right? It's still okay to say, my favorite thing is to have a bed in the closet because that's where I feel good, right? Absolutely. And, or when I don't feel good, that's where I wanna go and you know read my book or whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. My favorite yeah. thing is so. underneath the stairs. You know how sometimes in older houses, they have those little nooks under the stairs. Actually, now we put a lot, well, a lot of times the dogs get them now, but I just think that's the most wonderful place for book, a little book nook and, and a little spot to be in there for uh, not only for younger people, but for older people too, whoever wants to use it. I recently moved into a new house and it's got all new spaces. And I have a kind of a new relationship with the world, you know, because my life changed a lot. And uh, I find that I, I find myself testing out spaces to see what do they feel like. And do I like that feeling when I'm feeling blue or do I like it when I'm feeling expansive or like what's going on there? So that's a really interesting thing. That's a luxury. Uh, also, yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. And when, yeah. when we moved in, so what, by we, I mean me and my two cats. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. But when we moved in, we, uh, we there's a walk-in closet and we really kind of moved into the walk-in closet and then we had to spend several days there because we didn't have any furniture <laughs> uh, because the truck didn't come for a and while maybe it and was you know how some of the goes. best moments <laughs> uh, well what is, what's interesting about it is that it still feels like the safe place in the house even for me Wonderful. you know i know that is true for the animals but that feels like that is true even for me. Um, so that's an interesting. I think it's wonderful that you, you know, I am the same with animals. You have to design with and maybe for your animals, but um, also for the other people in the space and all that, those energies that are converging in different places at different times. I think that's a really great point is that, you know, you moved into the house, but your two cats were there too. And you dang well better figure out spaces for them and safety no places for them and it's the exact same thing with with families you know everybody you know has a different genre they want and um my, some of my greatest joys is working with people with, with children and the children will tell you anything they're just wonderful and uh and how they want their bedroom set up and how it can change their sleep how it could change you know it literally changes their lives uh, when you have a designer who can hear them and you can do stuff and then, and then the parents let them and <laughs> all that. Yeah. When I remember when I was young, I, uh, I had an opportunity to do that in the house where, uh, you know, enough people had moved out, <laughs> but there was <laughs> space for me <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I was, I got to pick my chair and I got to, you know, pick the color of the rug and things like that. It was a real transition for me into uh, a knowing that I have the power of creation. <gasps> yes. And it wasn't it a powerful moment for your life? Wasn't that just like, whoo, game changer, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yes. right. That's right. Up until then, people told me what to do and I tried to do it and I was either successful or not and I got in trouble or didn't, you know, but there was no like, I get to choose, I get to pick, right? You were just, it was the olden days. They gave you food. They said, eat it. Like they didn't say, do you like carrots? You know what I mean? We, we would get in trouble for feeding them to the dog. That was how it was, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we had a special childhood too because we our family owned furniture stores. My experience was that I learned to do built-ins because otherwise the furniture might get sold out from underneath <laughs> you. <laughs> so as as much as much as you know, I credit I like going to that. school and everything. I, my, when I was 13, our parents built a house and I got to design my room and I did a hanging chain desk with specialty Spanish tiles <laughs> because I'm pretty sure, I don't think cognitively I knew it, but I'm pretty sure it's like, I want to keep the desk. I don't want it to get, go into the showroom for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. 
That is so funny. I can remember things like that. That is really funny. That is so great. <laughs> so I love that it's a real empowerment tool for young people and and parents who have the means to do that for their young people. It's a really great great thing. Absolutely. And you don't need you don't need tons of means. You you need to listen and you know how kids are. They like a cardboard box or a sheet that makes an Indian tent, you know. It's just the nuances of it. And you could apply that to to any spaces, to to any anything that they need. You can definitely do that without having to spend money. It's a lot of fun if we get to do we've done like custom King Arthur beds and you know, hanging swings and all kinds of things uh, for kids to make them comfortable. But it's it's also just it's just as worthy when it it's you know, something you make maybe. When we're trying to have an emotional set point that's somewhere around, <laughs> hi, honey, I'm happy to be home, right? <laughs> right. Then, uh, it, it, you know, the, the TV, hearing the TV from three rooms away or whatever, when you're trying to do something uh, is, is, or there's the battle of the music in the different rooms, right? Um, can really put a strain on being able to stay in an emotional place that you want to be, uh, and of course, on the relationship itself. Why do you always turn that on, right? <laughs> so, so let's talk a little bit about how can we both love being with the people who are in our lives and also love being separate from them. Headsets. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, you know what? I could put mine on if that's helpful. Yeah, headsets are, are great. The advent of that, I remember uh, when they first came out, it was it was uh, a wire that went to the TV and it was for older people because they would have the TV so loud. It was just crazy. <laughs> and um, and now that everybody has their own headsets and their own things, that's, that is in particular helpful. But it's a, it's a good question because you don't always want to have your headset on. You don't always want to be. That shuts down your environment and shuts down your senses. When in residential, we mostly want to open up. We want to be able to be safe and have everything, our heart open, our chakras open, our, our self open. And so that we can rest and restore and... Um, it, and I think it's a little harder if you just have the headset on all the time. And plus, you really can't talk to each other either. So there, so there's a lot of good, there's so many good sound solutions available now for residential and, and commercial spaces, but especially for a residential when um, I moved to, for the first time I lived in a high rise, I um, was petrified that I wouldn't like the sound of it. And I bought a condo. So I did the cork underneath the um, tile floor that was it was stone actually not so it was porous so that it could sound absorb the absorption could go from the concrete to the mud to the um, cork to the stone and so that that right there was a real game changer and also in my bedroom I did cork on the walls uh, over the sheetrock over extra thick sheetrock and you can do quarter inch over everything that you have say if you bought a place. And then I did cork in, in panels because it was a, sort of a traditional design. If it's not traditional, you could just layer the walls in cork. And then I put fat batting and fabric over that. And it was really, it was totally soundproof. There was no, not soundproof, but really sound absorptive. And, you know, it would be hard to hear anything. And those are just a few little easy tricks that look really nice that almost in every, um, a high rise master bedroom or I put I do sound solutions like that just it's better to sleep it just feels nice when you walk in the room and it's also acoustically great and another another thing is uh, sound systems throughout the house and now now they're flexible they don't have to be built in or anything you can move your speakers but that's a really nice thing like if you uh, two of people in the house maybe like the same uh, music or sit, listening to a, a thought show or something, then you could have those speakers in those rooms. Like you're in the kitchen, you're in the other, the relaxing room. So those speakers can be there and you could have other speakers and other things upstairs where maybe the kids are up there doing something. So divide, dividing up sound individually per room is very important. Yeah, yeah. So I love that you're bringing in both uh, dampening the sound. How do I make it less sound? And how do I make more sound? Right. right. How do I 
bring in the sounds that I really want. Right. And how do I make it like live? You know, why do we love concerts and stuff? Because the energy and the same thing when you have really good speakers that you're like placing places and we have, we have such great sound people and there's so many things available. We, we still actually do quite a, quite a few speakers and things that are actually built into the physical spaces that we can adjust, um, you know, on iPad or whatever in each space individually. Uh, because of the sound quality is just it's just amazing and it changes everything like it's simple as even surround sound you know for for a tv you have the the feeling of that it can make you jump out of the seat sometimes it's so much bass or so much it's, you're, you're frightened or whatever so yeah we can't ex we can't forget that it's it's so, it's, it's so exciting to have the variations in your home and also to use that that same system for meditation music and how does that change you? Uh, I want to go back one step and just uh, talk a little bit about the difference between how it feels. Like, because we're talking about designing our interiors, right? So there's, there's a pretty big difference between how it feels when we have temporary setups and when we have built-in, right? So uh, can you just talk a little bit about the benefits of having something set up done in a in a sort of perfectionistic way right to a to a higher level than you might would if you were just grabbing some things and putting it together right so where you've really thought it through and and you've got it all built in what does that feel like what does that do to how we feel about living in that space. Oh, this is brilliant. This I can definitely address this today. I was thinking, how do you get ready? I was one of the lucky people who had a really uh, nice space place to live, a condo, big condo, that I happened to be redoing. And then as luck would have it, the market went crazy and I got the opportunity to sell it. And I'm a designer, so it looked pretty good. And I got the opportunity to sell it like that. And so I said, well, it'll be fine. I'll just rent. And then and now I'm renting and it's like, it's a little like camping. It's not that you can't do it. It's just, I'm really trained to do the um, permanent, to do like, let's have a good, great fix, as opposed to there's a, a many, many things you can do to help your rental. Um, but it's a really, it's a completely different experience. I love this question. I, and then I just thought to myself today, it's like, yeah, I'm not sure how long I'll be in this area, but I probably will buy a house because I love that feeling. First of all, what you can do when you build, when you make a commitment to your space and that's, that's a good word even for a rental actually, because I'm not very committed to mine. So if you're committed to it, then there's a lot of things you can do, just even drapes and speakers and all kinds of things that you can do. And if you're committed to a house, even, uh, you know, for, you know, you'll be there a few years, you don't know if you'll be there forever. Wow. You can, when you build things in the vibrational structure changes, the architecture changes. And uh, the, the structure of the whole space just feels so cohesive. You know, when you walk into some spaces and you go like, wow, this feels nice. You might not even like, you know, the genre of it. However, you know that it's good. You know that it feels good. And that's the difference with the, with the built-in. All the vibrational elements are going in the same direction and they're edited correctly and they're, you know, architecturally done right. Yes, so I love that you're talking about this. And I have a real connection, of course, to this topic. And the the sense that a a, a built-in situation, like even you were just talking about uh, how we relate to the things around us, right? And we we know we have some evidence in the world that our bodies interact with the shapes around us. We do well in certain shapes and we don't do as well in other shapes. We hear differently in circular rooms than we do in square rooms or, or pentagram rooms. You know, I mean, you can just make everything really different, right? Depending on what the architecture is. So here we have this relationship that this body and its senses have two spaces and they are triggering those shapes are triggering parts of our brain and our body that are meant to keep us alive in the wild right these are very right very our old nervous system. systems that's right that's right 
And so when we have something that's built in and is built uh, specifically to sound a certain way or specifically to look a certain way, to have certain relationships, to have certain um, spiral relationships, right? We, we know that there are, and so part of what you were referring to earlier in terms of music that's built in a very specific way that can trigger things in your brain, this same situation is true in architecture and design. So then, right, if you're, if you're like me and you're kind of a little theater rat in your, in your background and you're used to just moving everything around every 30 seconds, then you're changing your relationship to the space all the time. And you can often trigger what's happening in your, your nervous system is something that you don't want. It's something that tells your body you're never safe. It's not okay. Right. I love this. Yes. It's right. I mean, uh, you know, on the simplistic version, there's been a lot of um, popularity of, um, you know, organizing your space and uh, keeping things neat and stuff like that. But it's we're talking about the same thing. See, so, so it's really bigger than that. Because not everybody can, you can organize your space, but not everybody's going to live like that all the time. Sometimes you turn on your Zoom and you look, oh my God, look at my kitchen, you know. Uh, so, how, so how are we going to deal with that on the bigger vibrational level? How can, how can we make spaces? And when you build things in, you have really item specific places for stuff, which is a game changer in life. You don't have to go, oh, I hope it fits in this dang cabinet today. You know, everything, everything is really intentional. So your whole life can be more intentional. I'm happy we went down this road about intention here. Uh, and you remind me, um, so many of you probably already know that uh, my husband passed away a while ago now and <clears throat> I moved and I brought things with me and <laughs> if you've ever moved when you're insane you will know that sometimes <laughs> you make choices that you have no idea what happened when you get to your next place and a little bit of that happened for me right because my my decision making wasn't based on a on a history I didn't have a history anymore right I was trying to plan for something that I was completely in the unknown about I didn't know was I gonna enjoy cooking or not enjoy cooking was I gonna be able to you know do all these different things and so one of the things the the kitchen is a big topic for me and one of the things that I have that I was like I definitely need that is my KitchenAid so it's a mixer Oh, it does everything. I don't know. It grinds things. It does everything in the whole world, right? It sings and dances. And it was it was my husband's. And uh, so I was like, it was I, the best. I need it. <laughs> yes, it's true. He was quite particular. It's Beautiful true. taste. It's I true. mean, impeccable. And also uh, something that I used less than he used, but I knew like... If I want to enjoy my life, then some of the things that were present in my life before have to sort of find their way into my life. So I've got this KitchenAid and uh, it's beautiful and I love it. And it's sitting on the counter <laughs> <laughs> and it's so really just sitting on the counter, you know, and it doesn't have a place. It doesn't have a place. I could stuff it someplace. It's kind of big, so it's hard to be one of those things that you just go like, well, over there is good enough, you know? We do pop-up units for those, like a, a specific cabinet with a pop-up unit in it. We literally, the, with the house that we're building right now, my client built a pantry, a full-on, like, it's like a, it's about 10 by 12, her pantry, and it's really for the, for the mixer, for the KitchenAid. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't care what you do. Just make sure I can do everything I want with that. Make sure there's enough height and width and everything. The rest, we can store stuff, but this is what we're designing for. Oh, I love that you bring this up because every little thing. So, so just so that we're really tying this into our emotional story, right? Uh, if you've been through grief or you've been through any kind of change in your life, right? I have a friend who lives in Japan. And at some point, she will likely move back to the U.S., right? And so her relationship with her things, she has a beautiful home and she has beautiful things, but her relationship to her things are going to change when she does that, right? And so no matter what that scenario is that brings those massive changes for you, uh, to really think about 
it in advance. And then if you're not fortunate enough to have hired that really good interior designer, who, by the way, I did get her to come to my house <laughs> and put the paintings up at least. <laughs> Smart, um, smart woman, smart but woman. <laughs> art, art makes a difference. Well, I, art makes a huge difference. But the emotion. Let's go back to those emotions of of moving. Is it moving? When it like divorce? It's like on the scale of death and divorce and moving. You know, and so it doesn't matter who you are. You could be moving. I moved two miles. It was traumatic, um, and it's just it's just the same. So yes, and and a good editor for that for that. And it's it's, it's very tricky when you're going into the unknown and you're making life changes. You just check with your heart, just like you did. You check with your heart each time. You make the best guess you can. And then when you get there, just like we did, then you get your designer to edit. And we'll put, you know, some stuff go on the inside of the closet. Yeah, we were not sure why we brought that. But uh, a lot of it is just rearranged. And the particles become something different than they ever were because they're in a whole new space. And so therefore, your emotional system is going gonna, is gonna to change and react and respond quite differently than if they were in the exact same location. Yes, that's right. So, okay, I, I wanted to say that I love that there are um, fixes even after we've, you know, we've made a bunch of choices and we're bound to sort of make crappy choices sometimes <laughs> and, or to make choices that don't fit anymore, to be kind. Um, <laughs> but sometimes we just make choices that we go like, I don't like that anymore. And that there's, we're constantly evolving our spaces as well as our internal uh, barometers as well. And I love this, um, reference that we're that we're sort of developing here to to developing your space and also to making um that relate to the development of your emotions i i find that so many times people um either don't remember what they really love about being here on the earth or they have train themselves out of it because it's unacceptable in their spouse, spousal relationship or maybe even just their self-conception or it's impractical because they have a lot of responsibilities or children or things like that. So how that happens is through time, isn't it? Yes. How do we disassociate from what, from what makes us happy? Yes. Or we forget. Well, what I mean oh, we, is how oh. do we bring it back in? You know, how do we how do we pull that back in? Well, I, I think a really great designer could help you bring back, you know, having to do with your home. I think like the, um, the intuitive part of, of being a designer, as you well know, you were a sound designer for many years. Um, the intuition part is like really big. I would always say, even when I like had no idea about vibration or anything, like when I first started, I would always ask people, what do you, what do you want it to look like? What do you want to think when you walk there? And, and what do you want to feel? And my clients are amazingly educated, wonderfully successful, but they rarely could get to, rarely could get to the feel. I had to really work for that. I would have to couch it and phrase it differently. And it's like, I think we, we often, you know, we're busy. We don't uh, take our time and close our eyes. And what do I feel in this space? And, and, is, does it feel good? Does it feel like me? And often you just go, no, I like, I really don't like where I am. That's why we're moving. So, uh, but I don't know what I want. And then, and the world really is open to you. And, um, and, uh, there's, you know, a, a, a variety of things. Tra I think travel can inform your senses if, especially if you grew up maybe in a more modest way, but now you can have some luxury. And so when you travel, you, there's different senses, especially hotel rooms are, you know, that's why they're successful or not. They pride themselves on making a space that smells good, feels good, has good activities, bathtubs and stuff. Bathtubs are controversial. I will say most of my clients don't like them. I'm a huge bathtub lover. I think that's a, an elegant way to relax and to really um, make it a part of your routine. So there's, there's all those, you know, you can, you can inform yourself through a variety of ways and, and also through your visual. I mean, I think TV, of course, um, informs people beautifully, like uh, not about the pricing, but about the, um, <laughs> but about what do they want and what do they want to look at and where do they want to live? Especially now after COVID is like, People are, you know, it's a big heyday for being an interior designer because people are much more attuned 
into how they feel about their spaces, how their spaces serve them and, and feed them. And they live through a time when they, maybe they weren't paying so much attention to it. Then all of a sudden, magically, we're there. How do, how do you make that transition? What do you really want? And that's, that's very much the trend right now is to get really what you want. How do you, how do, you do that, right? So, like, let's say I have a, a new big house. I do. <laughs> and I think, I don't know where the artwork goes I think the the couch goes over there you know what I mean like I think there's a kitchen over there Woo! <laughs> but how do you um how do you work with people to help them to tune into those things to find solutions and fi find those answers within themselves how I do it is I read the room and I read the person so you have an architectural space and then you have the pe people or person. Sometimes there's one lead that, you know, you read them because they're, they're going to win. And sometimes there's couples or families even. And you have to you have to read their energy. And you I, I literally can move a painting somewhere and go, oh, no, this is not right for them. Who cares if it looks good there? It might look great there. But it's just it's not right for them. And that, that's custom design, you know. And, in, I, and truthfully, a little tip here is that you could do it yourself. You could put it there and go, yes, that looks, the colors are great. goes per perfect size above the sofa. And then you, you're just like, okay, let me leave it there. Then you walk away and you come back and it's niggling at you. That's, that's your own. We all have the power in ourselves to do anything. And are we more educated and is it easier for us? Absolutely. But... Um, but you, but you can do it for yourself because you actually know, but it's just, I think it's almost impossible sometimes to really listen to yourself about certain things. Um, and as a professional designer, we can, we can read that in people and we can adjust things. And sometimes not, none of the pieces of art that they brought, they might have a giant home there. Maybe they're downsizing. Maybe they have like 2 million pieces of art and not one of them looks good in a certain space or, or feels good in that space. And that's important to listen to too. Or sometimes like five of them look just as equally as good, rarely, but it, it can happen. So I love that you're talking about this, really tuning in, right? We're yes. really raising the awareness of how does my body feel in this moment? Because feelings are a body relationship that you're having, right? A lot of times people feel like feelings are kind of airy fairy and they're they're not easy to pin down like how do you know when you're having one and what do you call it and all of those things. But if you're raising your awareness of your body and the space around your body, then the you think to yourself when when something changes, you can think to yourself, "Oh, I feel that something is different." And you may not be able to say, "Oh, it's different in my big toe," and that's I recognize that feeling, right? But you may be able to say, "I recognize that something about me is less comfortable than it was a minute ago, or is more comfortable than it was a minute ago." And do I want to go? consciously do i want to go from com where i am to that comfort or not so this is a really big deal right because sometimes you are trying to walk into the unknown you are trying to break that habit of being yourself right you're trying to become somewhere that you aren't right whether it's in your your relationships or in your career and you or even in your health and you you you're reaching for something. And so comfort may not be the feeling that you should be reaching for, but sometimes it is the, the feeling that you should be reaching for. And that really comes from that heightened awareness of, of what do I feel now and how am I going to get to where I want to go in terms of my feelings? I have two thoughts on that. One is like, you know, that inkling, I think for ourselves it's hard, but I was thinking if you're in a couple, when I work with couples, I immediately know if one of them thinks that it can read the other one. And so sometimes like that's how it works. You know what I mean? That you can get someone else's inkling. You can get their essence of something. Can, do, you know what I'm talking about? You can feel you can feel their energy. I think that's maybe how I work as a designer. Like I could just feel it coming. <laughs> I don't have to wait for the answer. Um, but you can do that with couples. I know I've, I've had um, 
variety of husbands and <laughs> you can feel that the answer coming it's not cognitive it's it's a feeling and so um i think i think that's a really good way if you're if you're not doing if you go i just can't tune into this and you don't want to get a designer that's a good way to do it try to read from somebody else and then go oh i know when i have that little inkling like that and then the other thing I thought of what you were talking about is when we change, I'm sure you see this in your clients, when they change and they're making quantum leaps and they're just all of a sudden they, they like got it, you know, and you get, your, your interior has to change. Suddenly we don't like where we're living. It's like, what? It was just fine last week, you know, and nobody else can understand it. It's like, but you know, it's, it's, you've changed. And then, so your environment has to change. Or in, in any capacity, it could be you get new pillows. It doesn't matter, you know. It's um, and and so a lot of times when you're making a quantum leap, you're actually going to change physical environments because the old you isn't there anymore. The the person who loved that or really appreciated it, then and it gave them the space to change. And then you don't need that container anymore. You can go to a new one, and you know that's a whole other wonderful process of you know how do you find the right space and then how do you make it the right space and and all that kind of stuff and i love that you've you've opened the door to what does color do to us right oh, so color. when we're looking at that purple that is on the pillow we are having a a nervous system bodily and and extra bodily right and and energetic reaction to color shape form and placement and then we look at ourselves and we're like I don't like I don't want that button pushed I feel that button that button doesn't feel good anymore I don't want to become that person or in that situation I can tell you I have literally in especially in this this new place where I am there have been times when uh something happens around me a, a conversation or whatever and I uh, I have a feeling and I find myself in a specific room right because we Love are it. matching ourselves right we, we go, uh, so I had automatically without thinking about it gone to a space where that feeling could exist where that feeling was supported and sometimes that's good sometimes that's not what a wonderful thing that you can hear yourself and then if you're in that space what do you do about it if that space is a uh, you know you know a guest bedroom and you have guests you know what i mean it's like what do i do about that how can i make these changes so that i don't have guests in my in my space that makes me feel magic or whatever it is right so this is this is where we get back to doing the work the internal work yes right exactly and and that's really the kind of work that we do in the membership it's the kind of work that we do in it when people work with me one-on-one -on -one and in groups is that we really we hone that ability so that first of all if you do find yourself randomly wandering places and going like i don't know i just had to stand over here uh, right. You get awareness. But then beyond that, you also gain the ability to have conscious control over your experience. You get to participate in a deliberate way. And that's a whole different ball game. And I feel like when we when we make a few changes where maybe we clear a little space out, maybe we get some candles together, maybe we set intentions and those kinds of things that when we make a little space to hold our emotional work, then we can be super deliberate about it and it has a place where it's supported, right? So when you do find yourself in the middle of that argument with the person you live with, you go like, hang on, I got a spot where I can go and I know it's safe to have my emotions and I know it's safe for me to interact with my emotions without damaging my relationships. Does that include ritual? Like I know you used to sell or you might still sell it. It's like a beautiful can that holds different kinds of candles that have different smells and different intentions to them. And you literally can make different intentions to them as long with, along with the things that came with the kit. But... Um, uh, I remember I, you gave me one and I could go to my space that I kept it in, take it out and actually have a ritual so that I could center point myself and find myself 
uh, having to do with any, any, really any particular issue. And especially if you're going through a longer term uh, thing, like when my dog was dying, it was so sad for me. I was able to um, find a space that I could be sad and appreciative of her and also hug her and, uh, and have a ritual that honored my feelings as well. I am a real fan of physical tools. I love to work with the body itself so that we can make different shapes and uh, breathing techniques and do all sorts of things with nothing, right? Where we don't have to go buy anything. But when I work with people, I also love for them to be able to interact with the world because this is kind of a magical place, right? And there are, I remember the first time I thought this thought, uh, I realized that I was using a spice in the kitchen that had some medicinal properties, right? It had some health benefits. And as I looked at the spices that I was using, I thought, well, I could use this or I could use this. And they taste totally different and they're from totally different parts of the earth. And yet my body will do the same thing with them. They will benefit me in a specific way. And I realized that this, this world that we live in has so many ways to support us, to benefit us. So whether that's food or foundation, right? You can literally do it with stones and things like that, um, or shapes or uh, fire or scents or, right? So we can get everything going. And I am a real fan of getting that going. So inside uh, inside a couple of my memberships, actually, we do uh, some work with a, a material called Orgone, right? Or some people call it Organite, where you it essentially amplifies energy. And so you're able to, when we work together with it, to use it to amplify energy that I also am helping you to amplify. So you've got a whole swirl of physical and non-physical and energetic energy going together to be able to reach those intentions that you have that can be emotional intentions or they can be real world intentions. That's wonderful. And literally, yeah. if you're building your house and you have a lot of these things that you... Um, you know, once you start to become aware of like what a little piece can do, then what if I made my whole floor out of something? What if I did, you know, how, if I designed my house in a way that completely supported me and amplified the good, how is, how is that going to change our lives? Mm, yes. And you really remind me of the aspect of artwork as well, that uh, there are artists who are using materials and even on your walls, right? We can use clay and materials that look beautiful, right? They're, they're not, you don't have to look like you're in a mud hut, <laughs> <laughs> right. but they look beautiful and they really support us in different ways, right? They change what this this device I'm, I'm sitting in front of it. Here I am with a computer and it's doing all sorts of things uh, because that's what it does. And those things can be detrimental to me or I can be supported so that those things are not detrimental to me. Right. Absolutely. Really Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things I do. I remind the American clay reminds me of the, a family I did and I did it and I was there, uh, had a very large house and they had two children that were on the spectrum, fairly severe. And often the woman looked like, you know, you would if you had two children that you were taking care of that were needed special needs. And so I said, why don't we do this whole room? And they had the means to do it, like a giant kitchen uh, family room and actually going up a stairs. So it was like an amazing amount of American clay. And just the change that and that actually literally changes the ions. And just that change, we did change a rug, we added some soft surfaces, you know, when you, you're on the spectrum, which we're all on some spectrum, um, you got to get surfaces that, uh, that really res you respond to. It was amazing that this woman was so grateful because these kids sat at the kitchen table and drew and they never had a, a pl really a place to, to do that. And to be so supported uh, by the environment. So yes, there's so and, many things. And you the do. calmness, the calm, right? And right. the calmness. Yes. Just by changing the walls yes. and, the, and a few of the surfaces. Yes. This is, it is. It is really magical. It's I magical. Have a real, um, 
Yeah, I have a real respect for it. I really, I enjoy that this world can be so, you know, so much of what we talk about is internal in my world, right? We talk about our feelings and how can we change them. And then we get to be physical as well. And that, it makes it, it amplifies it all, right? And so we get to sort of play with all of this. Um, I know that sometimes when people are feeling a sense of lack, they also um, might feel like they don't have choices over where they live and uh, what those surfaces are like and what the shape of the place is like. And so even these small changes, right, that we can make. So you're talking about this entire room, but even to go and get yourself a, a specific type of uh, element or even a piece of, uh, they sell them now, I think, like a square of American clay, like covered in American clay. Or you could put drapes up that have properties that are similar to that, you know, and there's, there's so many, you could change the air quality. We, oh, we could go down the road on this. There's so many things you could change your lighting. Most people have their own light bulbs and you know, they're, and, or they have their lighting too bright or they have their lighting too dim and that and, you know, lighting has to be adjustable and, and, uh, oh, there's such good lighting right now. Um, so, uh, yes. And those are, those are easy. Those are affordable things that almost anyone could do. Yeah. I love that. Well, I have gone on with you for longer than we normally do. And I, I have to say, I feel like, uh, we have so much more to uncover in, in this. And I hope that our listeners love this conversation because I would love to have you back on another episode in the future. You bring the magic and you just are joy. I mean, when they developed the word joy, you were on the, you're like next to it in the dictionary and you're I just hiding so behind the door going, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you just bring the magic. You're completely magical. And it's just such an honor and a pleasure to know you. Actually, I think it would be harder to know that your sister's magical than, than to know, you know, than to know just anybody because it, like we see each other's warts. I mean, we, you know, warts and all. So, uh, you know, it's just, you've got a really strong plate of magic. And, uh, you know, it's evident in your success with your clients and everybody else, but it's really evident in your everyday life. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a powerful example. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Now, listen, before we go, I would like you to tell everybody, uh, how can they find you? Uh, interioredge.com. They can find me on LinkedIn. They can find me on Facebook. They can find me on Instagram. Interior Edge. Uh, we'll put it in the materials, but it's Interior Edge design. Thank you so much. I want to remind everybody first that there is all of the links will be on the platform that you're listening on. And also I want to remind you all to go to the roadmap to morejoy.com. So you'll learn about yourself. You'll raise your awareness. You'll end up in a specific city and you'll get to read about what those feelings are in that, that mythical version of that real city. Take a minute to go through it. It will help you to know where you are and how to get from where you are emotionally to where you're trying to go. Thank you so much. Yes, and it's a lot of fun. I would highly encourage you to do your roadmap quiz.